November 1, 2020. Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike Ground School. This video is going to cover a topic that can stump a lot of people, including myself. VFR weather minimums, 91, 155. Or minima? Probably minima, but nobody says that. We have extremely complex airspace and rules regarding that airspace. You're certainly going to be asked on your written test and on your practical tests what your visibility and cloud clearance requirements are for each type of airspace. I used to struggle with this a lot and occasionally have to think for a few seconds to come up with the answer. I've never found an automatic way to just know this stuff. So what I did for my ground instructor's exam was to create a fun little diagram to help me remember what all the rules in each airspace are. Now, you can either copy my diagrams or you can make up one of your own, but I think I've simplified this as much as possible. Now what I've done is I've broken this up into segments by different requirements rather than the different types of airspace. There are fewer things to remember this way and I find it more helpful and I think that you will too. For instance, class G at night, regardless of altitude, is three miles visibility and you have to maintain cloud clearances 1,000 above, 500 below, and 2,000 horizontal. Now, you can see that these are actually the same as your class D and E below 10,000 feet. And so they're all grouped together into one set of rules. Uh, C as well. Now, G during the day above 1,200 AGL has the same clearance requirements, but you're only going to need a mile visibility. And if you're below 1,200 AGL during the day in class G, you just need to be clear of the clouds, which means don't fly through them. The weird one in here is it's class B. It needs three miles visibility, but you just have to remain clear of clouds. There's no clearance requirement for the clouds. You need ATC clearance to get in and clearance from the clouds. Clearance from ATC and clouds in class B airspace. The last group of rules covers uh, class E at or above 10,000 MSL. And I remember this one as if there are five F-111 fighters way up there. The five is the flight visibility, and the 111 is 1,000 above, 1,000 below, and one mile horizontally. So remember, there are five F-111s up high, and there are three tiny 152s down low. I drew this diagram several times to help me memorize it. I would typically do it on a little post-it, uh, and then I finished one, I would do another one and keep using post-its. So when I went into my test, the first thing I did on the scratch paper they provided was draw this diagram right away. And so I wouldn't forget it that way, and then I could refer to it when I needed it. This also, of course, let me focus on the other questions on the test and not have to keep trying to remember this diagram. So I suggest you practice drawing this little diagram until you can't forget it. It might seem silly, but it works. I promise you. The action of writing this out several times is the fact that uh, it's a picture and not just a table will make it easier for you to remember and not just for your test. Let's zoom in here and do this one more time. Then you can pause this video and print a screenshot of this uh, to use as your template or you know whatever you want to do. But you need to learn this diagram. So I first draw my line up here. This represents 18,000 MSL. Above this is class A airspace. Draw my little cloud. Anna. A-N-A. -A. Up here, there is no viz or cloud clearance requirements. Because you have to be on an IFR flight plan to fly in class A airspace. And so that does not apply. So Anna above 18,000. You may be asked that on a test, but you might, you certainly will on an IFR, but probably not on a VFR. But you need to know that just in case. And so now I've got this grid here of several different areas that I'm going to create. I'm going to draw up here. Remember, I've got way up high. My next line will be at 10,000 MSL. I've got my five F 111s with their swept wings. Let's see, how do we want this fifth guy? Let's put him way out front. Okay, so I've got five F-111s up high. I'm above 10,000. This is for, of course, class E airspace. So I'm gonna draw my little cloud. I have drawn this diagram so many times. So we're gonna do five E. Now, F-111, 
Here's my five flight visibility. F-111, this reminds me that I've got 1,000 feet above, 1,000 feet below, and in this case, I have one statute mile uh, horizontal clearance from the clouds. So five miles visibility, five F-111s, one, one, and one. Okay, now down here, I'm just gonna make a grid. I've got four sets of clouds. We're all below 10,000 feet, MSL. And if you remember here, on this one, once we get down, down low, you know, um, Cessna 152s just can't go that high. So over here, I've got three little 152s. Yes, enjoy my stick figures. Three 152s. This one here, the three is your flight visibility. Once again, you need three miles visibility. Now, which classes go here? I don't have a great way to do it. I just go in alphabetical order, C, D, E, and this one is G at night, C, C Degen. I, I don't really know. Um, but there's the three, three 152s, 152. Remember, so that is 1,000 above. Uh, the five is 500 below. We go above and we, we go below, 500 feet below. And then on the side, it is 2,000 horizontally. One, five, two. Above, below, beside. Above, below, beside. Hopefully you're good with your prepositions because those all are. Now, this one here, on this side of the diagram, if you can remember this, there are similarities in the each column and each row. This one is also three, and this is B, three B. Now, here, you just need to be clear of clouds. 3B and cock. Now, you might want to draw your cloud a little differently to make it easier to remember, uh, but I'm going to leave that to you. I'm going to keep mine cloud shape. But 3B, cock. You have to have ATC clearance and clearance from clouds in class B. Of course, you can't ask the clouds for clearance. You just have to remain clear. Now, similarly, if we slide over here, this is going to be the same. But this is what's the same. It's not the flight visibility here. This is clearance from clouds, okay? And so this leaves us with one type of airspace that we haven't covered except for right here. This is G. Good day, mate. Good day, mate. This one is up high. This is below 1200, but we're AGL over here, okay? This is your AGL, 1200 AGL line. This is above. So in mountainous areas or maybe remote areas, you will find class G that exists above 1200 AGL. Ordinarily it doesn't, right? Class E starts there. But in remote areas or mountainous areas, you might find class G above 1200 AGL. So here on this side, our flight visibility, oh shoot, I need to put that inside the cloud. One, one G, regular, uh, regular, gravity for, regular force of gravity over here. 1G, good day, mate, and we're clear of clouds. So below 1200 AGL during the day, you need one mile visibility and clear of clouds. So this is our similarity here. We're clear of clouds down here in B and G. Up high, it's nearly the same, but what's similar in this column is our flight visibility. Flight vis. You can see where, where flight vis is the same here and here. So if it's one here, it's going to be one here. However, this direction is also the same as far as cloud clearance requirements. We'll call this Credence Clearwater Revival. These are the same here. Okay. Um, and so we are the same. And so we are 1,000 above. We are 500 below and we're gonna go 2,000 horizontally. Over here, we only have one 152, whereas over here we have three. And this is the complete diagram that I have made many, many times so that I memorized it, and I recommend that you do it similarly because when you draw diagrams and pictures, it makes it much easier to remember.
And hopefully this makes sense of how I split it out so that you don't have to remember this odd table of values from the uh, FARs. Over here, this column, the flight visibilities are the same. Over here in this column, flight visibilities are the same. So visibility columns, and here in the rows, we have cloud clearances are the same. 152, 152, and clear of clouds, and clear of clouds. So your cocks are down low because, well, I mean, nobody has one that's over 1,200 feet long. So this is how I remember this. And you've got this oddball up here with the five F-111s way up high in class E. Well, that does it for visibility and cloud clearance requirements. This will absolutely show up on all your tests every single time you fly. Unfortunately, it's quite complicated, but learning this little diagram by heart, you'll remember what the rules are. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. That'll certainly help me out as will leaving a comment down below. And stay with me on 121 Point Mike.